So right there, you've caused a problem right there. Right. I hit, hit the bank on her, and now she has to wait. Now, she, now she's off. Now yeah. she's wait. Now she's eight. Now if you hit another shot, she's eight. there she is again. Now she's low. So then now we're pushing while the Kiriko is looking backwards. She's not sure what she's supposed to do. The Ash is backing off. The Kiriko is backing off. And notice that we haven't used a single cooldown. So we've taken a lot less damage and freaking just won the fight just off of the fact that, oh, well, we shot the Ash on the off angle because she had no help. With the OWCS tournament up and starting, there's been a lot of really fun teams up and around, including my ability to coach Overwatch, the team with Custa, Karku, Emong, J3, and Apply. But was this team for content or was this team actually for improvement? Mostly content, but I think that there was a big opportunity here to actually improve. And in particular, Karku, most recently after a tough loss, we went about six and four. But after one of those tough losses, he actually reached out to me. and was like, hey, can we look at one of the, the maps where I felt really confused? He was playing a lot of Kiriko in the match and was felt a little confused about his role in terms of the composition that we're playing. In this room, we're gonna be taking a quick look at positioning, specifically proactivity, not exactly the flank Kiriko style, but how taking more off angles, even in a coordinated environment is still important. The three head versus five head approach with planning in terms of when they have a superior brawl ult, how do we actually play around that? How do we adjust our positioning depending on their ultimates? And then ultimately also looking for situations in which the solution to Suzu is very clear when in the moment can feel very confusing. All of these things are important for ranked play, but they're even more important for competitive play. And I hope that this provides a little bit of insight about the level of nuance that competitive play happens, especially with high level characters like Kiriko. Karku is a great student, and I'm sure you'll find this review very educational, no matter what rank you are. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and if you're looking for more coaching like this, be sure to not only check out this channel, but also my Spylo 2 or Spylo coaching channel. The link will be in the description. Yeah, I think these guys did a really good job just kind of catching our full engages, which is why they're able to make the Ash work for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, and and one, the crucial thing is that I was kind of piping off in chat about it was, and when the table was turned, and essentially when they had like these big brawl ult advantages, we weren't really adjusting how we were positioning or playing. We were just kind of standing there and letting them happen. And that's where a lot of these Suzu problems are coming into play because mm -hmm. you're the first, you're the stress point. Like Suzu's the stress point. So if we have a problem, like they have JQ and beat. How do I use my, you know, Suzu when they're beating and I have to Suzu somebody? Well, that's because we're, we're putting that pressure on you and we shouldn't be putting that pressure on you. However, one thing you can do to mix that up and we'll actually skip ahead to like, was it the first, the second defense was one of those fights? I think this was one of those fights where, yeah, like a fight like this, like this is a great example right here. We're not going to win this fight if we don't do something corny. So the way that we have to win is we have to gank. We have to flank. We have to basically let Emong be a bit of a punching bag and trade cooldowns elsewhere. What's um, tough for us is what kind... Do you see, like, our off angle control right now? Mm-hmm. Right Apply now... Apply for the gank visor here, yeah. Right, uh, Apply goes to the gank visor, but there's no support. There's no support. So what ends up happening is we've got, you know, Custa playing Patty Cake with Thunder right now. We've got Tracer, Tracer playing Patty Cake over here. But ultimately, like, even especially after this visor fails, we're like, oh, well, that failed. Okay, GG, just go next. But guys, we, they still have Pulse. They still have JQ. They still have Beat. We're going to lose this fight if we don't set up. And this is where I want to see you shift slightly in your play style. You don't necessarily have to like totally solve this, but I want you to experiment more. In situations where we're not going to win here, win here. Or win here. Or win here. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm leaving that purposefully vague just so that you can interpret that however you'd like. So for example, like right here, what stands out to you as a way to win this fight? Would you prefer to plus one apply? Would you help J3? Would you hold like, let's say a solo off angle here and try and trade back lines? Like what's, what are you feeling right now? From that position, it's probably, if I was with apply and maybe I dinked one of the people with him that he was visoring, that's probably the safest play. <laughs> I don't think TPing into J is smart here. I'm just gonna get clapped if sure. they sure. see me burn Suzu in that capacity from this spot. But obviously if I was already like, proactive enough beforehand i wouldn't have to sure but this is the crucial point even if you were to tp to jay who's going to clap you it's true okay that's a good point yeah right it's, it's the people that you're actively dueling right these people are too far away even mm. after the visor you got to ask yourself like where do i want to be right mm. is it is mm. it do is it like is it really that bad to go to apply now because apply is going to still play through the window here like you know don't tell me that you couldn't do something from here right like there would be because right. what this what this does for them is they have this ult they have these ults in their pocket they really want to burn they want to use these brawls they want to use their beat they want to use their jq ultimate and they see a kiriko and a soldier up in high ground and a jq just sitting solo here and who does a junker queen ult now who do they beat engage now 
Right. It would still just kind of be like a, I would assume just a poke war until they might just all right. in on Emong. They won't. They probably right. won't commit an alt for a bit until they see a clump. But right. Yeah. But crucially, there it's a poke war that we're actually in an advantage because we start to have high grounds. We start to have off angles. Their ash is stuck in hotel. Right. So <laughs> because we have these off angles and positions, we're happy to take a poke war but we're making it hard for them to commit. There's like two solutions. When we don't have ults, we either do one of two things. Apply really likes that. Let's just three, two, one trade backlines, force the ultimates. That's pretty good sometimes. But the other solution is that don't give them anybody to easy ult on. Don't give them a big clump of three or four or five people. Um, <clears throat> so even here, like one, two, three, J loses the off angle. Why did J3 lose the off angle? Where was his help? Mm -hmm. You kind of see what I'm saying? So we lose the off angle here and they didn't even have to use an ultimate. Um, and that's that's obviously a worst case scenario is when we, we just because we don't control enough off angles because J3 doesn't get help. Maybe he misplayed with the school guns. I don't know. Um, we end up losing it. So I, I think just a small mindset shift from you. Anytime that we don't have these old advantages, I want you to play a little more frivolous with your positioning. I want you to be more creative with who you're helping and, and make it harder for them to just three, two, one, read down. If that makes mm. sense. Mm hmm. Okay, I'm trying to remember what our comms were here. Here, so once yeah. they beat engage, I wanted to wait a little bit, let the beat wear down. But then, if we don't counter all here, do we have enough sauce here? We have you, just you, you my see, rush. You, yeah, you're seeing it again. This is an unwinnable fight. Yeah, because oh, this is because this is the fight right after, and they didn't burn yeah. anything. They won like a completely fight for free, and then they just had right. four for one. So, right. so we have the benefit of overhead here, but cheat. Like, what what are we supposed to do? How do we win this fight? I don't know if we can speed into the ash. Is probably just. I honestly, actually, I have no idea. I just, I just reactively pop my ult when they popped it, or it's like we just completely concede and give it up. But sure, sure. So, so real quick question: When you say you can't speed into the ash, why? Oh, I, 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 Custa, Custa was on the, on the off, and like, I mean, the only person who can re realistically run to her right now before she like makes it around the corner is maybe Emong, if we call that. If could he had shout, could be but, maybe Jay here with 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 speed. Here uh -huh. would be yeah. something to go for, right? Like at the very least, make this messy. Because here's here's the here's the question: Like if these guys are calling Katsune Rush or Lucio speed, and yeah. we start the run in the Ash, what does their Kiriko and Lucio have to worry about now? Sorry, repeat that question. If they want to use their Katsune Rush or beat on main, and then mm -hmm. we're now rushing the Ash on the angle at that same point in time, what do mm -hmm. these guys have to worry about? Um. Oh, I guess they just peel back because the Ash calls for help, and then maybe the right. Lucio dials back. Or, and or even theory. if they don't, like if they don't peel back, okay, then she dies, right? So they have to mm. make a really important decision. Do I help with the ultimates on main or do I help the off angle? We kind of force their hand. Again, we're kind of going into a situation here where like we don't, we're not going to win here in this little box. And if we can't win in this little box, we have to literally think outside of the box. We have to be like, all right, well then can we, can we kill this tracer? Like, can we make this a really messy fight and kill this tracer? Can we rush down the ash? Can we play, uh, I don't know. We put our soldier over here with the Lucio, push on main, set up our soldier Lucio, and try and trade back lines here. Um, and then you basically play super, super safe, Katsuni rush passively, bait their engage, and then just teleport away onto the off angle over here, mm. right? Um, the, my, the point being is that there's it's a very loose interpretation. Like, whatever you want to do here is fine. There's a lot of things. You could rush the Ash. You could you could send your Tracer in the flank and go with the Tracer. Heck, you and J3 could go by yourself here, communicate with Emong so it doesn't take too much damage. And set up a hit squad, try to one shot this tracer, right. and then force her out, and then try to kill backline. Say, all right, Emong, let's go. Three, two, one, push. And we're gonna Emong, we're gonna Kitsune rush from the flank onto the backline. Mm. All you're trying to do is you're trying to make it messy because it's a guaranteed loss fight either way, right? So you might as well make it messy, win some trades, play for the wars. You guys are treating this like um. Here's what it is. So let me get, here's the analogy that I have. The enemy has like their queen in chess, right? And all you yep. got are a bunch of pawns. You can't play fair. You have to do something weird. You have to play something really rat mode. Otherwise, you're just going to lose. And I think where we struggle is we're really good in these core fights. Everyone's target focus is good. Our mechanics are good. But what ends up happening is in these fights that are we're not going to win in this spot, we don't really know what to do. And I think that that's going to demand a little bit of creativity from everybody here. But I definitely think that you yourself can help with this because you're the one that's paying for it. You're the one that has to make these decisions. Do I do I Suzu this? Right. Right. Do I Suzu this, right? Do I Suzu this, right? Or do I not? Like, because if I don't Suzu this, maybe we just die. Okay, now there's a free Junker Green Ultimate, or there's a free uh, Beat Engage, or there's a free Pulse Swim, or whatever. Because um, mm -hmm. even though, in theory, we do kind of run on the flank here. Hey, Nesha, we run the flank. This flank is not supported, right? 
There's no Lucio speed here. We didn't uh, support it with you know our amp. We didn't support it with anything. Instead, we're trying to half peeling back and half going for the flanks. It ends up not working out. Is all this mm -hmm. kind of making sense? Yeah. No, it is. It is. Okay. Anytime you can't win in the box, you got to think outside of the box. You got to clear flanks. You got to take your own flanks. You got to make plays. You got to make it difficult for them to know who to, who do we need to ultimate. Right. <clears throat> now, fight like this. Now, this is actually a really good example here um, because this is one of the things that they did a really good job because now now who is the one that wins in the box here? I can't remember what happens in this fight. Is it us here? Well, well just, actually, they right, burned a lot in the previous fight, so yes, it should right, be us. They only right, have a single right, bob. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We, we, we have JQ ult, we have beat. They're not going to win this fight. So look at how they play this. Now, we win this fight, but look at how they play this. We, they boop our Junker Queen ultimate, so it gets one person. The Ash is able to disengage. The Lucio, by the way, is not even playing with the Ash. He's playing forward to de de uh, basically deny our push. And then the Ash opens with Bob. That puts us under a lot of pressure, puts Cuss under a lot of pressure, and the Tracer's hard flanking on back line at the same time. Mm -hmm. So do you see how ugly this is for us? Yeah. Like, we want a 3-2-1 rush down the Ash. They're not giving it to us. Right. They're not giving it to us. In fact, they open with an ultimate to bait us, mm -hmm. and then they just ran away and disengaged. And then now we've blown both of our Brawl ultimates. And remember this fight, we're, we're lucky, honestly, even to kill the Queen here, actually. Um, she didn't even get a chance to use her shout. Um, or maybe she did, excuse me. But died almost instantly. Yep. Basically, they just sell their Queen. They're like, all right, well, we'll take that. Two Brawl ultimates for one. We go back to spawn. We lost one person. And then we immediately regroup and fight again. Mm. Um, and so they, they did this consistently. Like, anytime we were in, in the other position, like, we were the ones with the Brawl advantage, they made it really hard for us to, like, actually get a clean fight. Jay gets mm. murked. Um, this is where we were like three, two, one, and this is this is a pretty good call. Hey, we're gonna lose this fight. Like, let's just go in and make a play, and uh, and it works out. Uh, I forgot what happened there. there. Can I see what I did there? Just for a yeah, small. yeah, sure. Did, of course. did I die here? I no, you TP'd in. Like we out. we played we played we played ratty here. We basically were like, oh, we're down when J three is instantly dead. What are we gonna do? You take oh, yeah. Tigron. You're hard to rush. We say, let's just go. Let's just let's just go in on a squishy. So, see, their Ash gets greedy. You see that? Yes. It's yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, we're yeah. up one. Let's push. Let's push. Let's push. No, wait a second. And then we caught her with the pants down. <clears throat> and this was a really nice Suzu. You accidentally caught the pulse bomb here, but we'll pretend it was on purpose. It was on purpose. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, and then, and and then it goes back and forth. And it, and, it goes, and it goes back. And this is, again, where I would like for us to be thinking, like, obviously, like, you, you get smoked here. But, like, let's say you, you don't get smoked here. You're going to have Katsune. They're going to have Katsune. They're going to have beat. You need to got you got to think outside the box here, right? Mm. So, what do you think? You're shot calling this. What do you do? What do you call? Um, obviously, if I didn't get smoke there, I think yep. <clears throat> I think we were tracking and they we were we we're hoping they were going to respond with with rush and beat right there. So I was hoping. Um, I mean, that's our, our default play was Emong shouts first to kind of like start an engagement. Then I could soon a second to help ramp up his cooldown and play off that. And as soon as they respond, then we disengage because we had nothing offensive. Sure. Uh, but how do that. we disengage? How do we position for this? Because Emong, <sighs> like, how do you position? as a uh, Kiriko. Like you pop your Kitsune rush, they respond, the Kitsune, they beat, where do you go? One thing, I, I got punished early in the scrims uh, when I when we first started playing two days ago when like I kitsune and then I'd run forward with them and then as soon as they right. respond, like I have no one to TP to at that point, right? Because right, like they're right. in, so like I would probably pop Kitsune and actually just chill in the back. I agree, I agree. Play. Yeah. I agree. I think this would also be where you could just like utilize this high ground here, like Kitsune rush. And you could even Kitsune rush from, from the top high ground. Down. And play, yeah, that's yeah, a good and call. Yeah, just play super, super passively. And then just basically ask for Jay to kind of live in the back line and make sure that you have a, a TP angle. And then mm. the only thing that you have to worry about here is if Apply is uh, not a Neanderthal and Cuss is not a Neanderthal, and I don't think they're Neanderthals, then all you have to do is worry about keeping Emong alive, yep. right? As long as Apply saves Dash or Deflect, Custis saves his position, then we should be fine. Like, we're going to be able to put out a lot of pressure to force his ultimates, and then we just wait, poke, 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 wait for the beat, and then, we, then we're able to live it. Um, but again, it's like it requires like a setup. Just a little bit of a setup beforehand, and then yeah. this, whatever this. That, that's probably our that's probably our weakness, and yeah, that abomin <laughs> that that awful boop with yeah. the momentum. I, I think our layering is a lot better, definitely a lot better. By the way, this is another one where you just this is kind of like the old Q positioning right here, um, mm -hmm. just based off of like what they have, and so what's going to happen is. I think a plot of for it. Yeah, you you should get punished for that, and even if you don't get punished for that, be really careful about getting this close. Um, I was anyway. trying to. I thought they were gonna like kite a bit as soon as because like yeah, 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 my yeah. read was that well, if Emong shouts, they they back up instinctively. So I wanted to get like a, a cleaner true. angle on the Kitsune to like cover their retreat more so than like a really far back one, and that's also true. risk throwing it over the payload. At least that was that's, that's the initial true. thought. That's yeah, true. that's true. Just be careful when again they have two for one essentially. Of course, of course, yeah. 
And this is where, like, again, they know that we have Blade. They yeah. know that we have Beat. So they're just playing super, super baity. Like, look at the tray, how deep the tracer angle is. Look at where mm -hmm. the Genji's position. Look at the Kiriko's position, right? They're they're selling their Junker Queen because who can, who can apply Blade here besides mm. Queen? So they uh, they were ready for the, yeah that's true actually and they just and they just they just absolutely kill it honestly they didn't not even need beat here um this is a pretty good disengage from us because they really didn't need beat it's actually unfortunate that apply dies that quickly but like they actually didn't even need beat there they're just ready for it um mm -hmm. and I, like I said I think our layering is improving a lot but I think what happens is again when we don't win in the box in terms of layers we don't have the creativity to think outside the box because one of our limitations is applies a really good igl but he's not creative when it comes to like the flank plays and the same thing goes with j3 very tank focused very tank centric but we don't necessarily open up off angles so we get screwed if we don't win in this war like if we don't win right here we don't win is mm. basically our problem mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then whatever happened with and then the what, ultimate. And then in my personal so then my personal perspective is also to like add on to some of these creative plays on these off yes. angles in situations yes. like this. Yes, okay. exactly. And then even just considering your distance a little bit more with your positioning, like even minor adjustments, like when you're talking about the Katsuni B, even if you're not gonna be Mr. IGL here, just play high ground. That mm -hmm. small adjustment can be the difference between you're getting your TP or your Suzu forced. Mm -hmm. Um which means then you're then able to fully relax and just pocket Emong. Because Emong is always the guy that's going to be the, the one paying for our sins, essentially. Like, he's the guy that's going to have to take the beating while the rest of us are on the flank. Um, but yeah. But little little detail here is, I think J3 was talking a little bit about this. Um, this is just it comes down to a timing issue. Like, we need to be super disciplined about how much damage we're taking, when we're peaking, when we're not peaking. Because a little bit, little stuff like this, like even Emong just peaking there just to go for his own knife, he shouldn't be peaking until these guys are pushing out, mm. right? I know that's not... You know kiriko coaching but that's a that's a reminder for you as well like generally we want to be synchronized three two one rotate peak um because what ended up happening here is you were like man we're taking so much damage taking so much damage it's because we're peaking that ash before we're actually set right and then all five of them since there's no pressure from jay on the off angle Emon just takes five people it. looking at him and, then and I, it, it forced me to suzu just like that because i was like holy yes. shit you just got blown up in like a that's second it. that's it timing okay. good timing makes in good choices impossible because it's either shoot the uh let the jungle queen walk out for free or die to the tracer on the flank right but mm. when we go in when the when emong peaks and then j3 peaks and then lucio peaks then we get screwed um because we just let like the ash choose one target at a time whereas what we do here is like night and day because look at how we approach this fight i mean you can look at the overhead here check this out mm -hmm. um three two one you see the I, difference here yeah so apply called this this is the, one of those like uh like proactive plays right there where like right we went to hotel and applies like go there and i'm gonna completely double back and then pressure there their yep, ash here yep. so, so who does the ash focus now right like what yeah. is she supposed to put her priority on the guys that are standing out in the open the genji that's dashing on top of her and apply doesn't even need to get the kill it's just enough pressure to distract and pull resources this way and so yeah. then how the jungle queen dies right? right um and so also you notice as well that like who's critical here mm-hmm really just emong right it's just the one guy nice shot by the way um yeah. which makes your job significantly easier because you don't That's have right. to think about seven different things at the same time so yeah they can't kite here good layering from us here really good layering i mean this this, this should be something that we should be able to win um right let's talk about the details of the setup though so in terms yeah. of like this is where, like, this is the sad thing. You can have a perfect plan, but if you don't set it up well, it's not going to work out. Like, the idea here, Katsuni Rush, they shout, they bob, they Katsuni. We layer a beat on top of that, and we should, in mm -hmm. theory, win the fight. The problem here is there's a 2v1 happening here, and there's a 4v3 happening here. We have an advantage here, but we have to finish the kills. The question yeah. is, does Ash die? I think we probably needed to continue the commit all the way through and just finish the kill quickly. Mm. In addition, Jay has to realize that these guys are playing for angles 24-7. Right. They're mm. just playing to mark him. So as soon as he sees this recall, he needs to run. This time shooting is completely a waste of time. He needs to get out and just live. It's a 2v1. He's not going to win it. He doesn't need to live it. He just needs to... Uh, he doesn't need to win, excuse me. He just needs to live it. I guess okay. I, I was going to... I just wanted to, like, say it out loud, my thought process here, and then Please. see where it gets weak. So... The call was, you know, the Bob's going to fire me at my ass in the back. We have beat, so I had to just press W with them. I'm right. thinking here, I just saw critical, and I, I knew we double ulted. I, yep. I do know they have uh, queen ult. Mm -hmm. um, so here, I, th I probably did not have to Suzu that at all, maybe. Right. In so hindsight. This, th this, is, this is one of those things where you, you 
you can't second guess your decision making if the decision making had logic behind it. So like right here, your Suzu here is stupid, not because they have queen ult, but because the guy yeah. has beat HP. Yes. Right? Yes. I think you were saying earlier in chat, we were like, oh, like, I shouldn't yes. use, like it's trying to make that decision making. But if they're crit, Suzu them, let them win through queen ult. It's fine. You know, mm -hmm. but the reason the Suzu was, was bad was not because, oh, Junker queen ult, but because just, were, you, would you yeah. rather lose the fight to nothing or would you rather lose the fight to queen ult no right? i got so, i got baited by the icon it's just ranked right, play this right. is it, this is just and, finesse, it yeah. and, and, and it happens like that that's just a, that's just an individual error the same yeah. thing with j3 dying and so like we we live with that it's fine the way i look at it is like any individual ints it's not like they're okay like oh it's fine but we don't really worry too much about them you know gg goes next you know mm. it's i'm more concerned about stuff that we can control a little bit easier good play that one too. That was the one I was talking about before, like the delay. So like yeah. this was um another moment where I, I still knew they had Queen all here. They're all burning, but then they are decide to go instead of waiting, which is right. fine, I guess. But they're DPS passive right now. I saw yeah. Apply's blade. Yeah. Um I don't think I anticipated the beat because I was like, maybe the blade can confirm a kill. So I saw him low. I just wanted to ensure he was living. Yeah. That was my I, logic in that moment. I, Right. Again, I think the Suzu is actually pretty reasonable here. Again, I, I think you are like I'm not, you're making plenty of mistakes to be clear. But yes. I, this is not the one that I would be obsessing over too much because again, mm. this is a situation where if I'm apply here and I die right here because I don't get Suzu, I am fuming. Right? Because mm -hmm. that just cost us like we we just die like instantly right there. I think if you want to look at things from a more a bigger picture perspective. Yeah. What's the problem with this overall play? I don't think it's a bad play, but what's the potential weakness out of this play? I guess just my angle. It's just very narrow. Partly. I can, yeah. Um, partly. partly. Think, think big, bigger picture. I want you to coach your team here because this uh, is going to influence your decisions moving forward. I guess support for Jay. I do notice that their their Lucio is following their their tracer yep. around quite a bit. So yep. Jay's always taking the the one v two here. Yes. So if yes. we are committing on the you know the four v three, it has to be a confirmed. But then the Ash is playing right. very safe in the back, and there's no pressure on her. Right. She's right. able to coach gun away, which means like we have to bank on completely killing the queen if that's like our only out. It. Yeah. This is what's this is what's happening, and this was happening a lot where we would sometimes get so tunneled on queen we'd miss details like this. Mm. Um where this 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 queen or this ash was uncontested so what's the solution here how do we approach this fight we have blade we have close to queen we have beat what do you think this is hard by the way so yeah so, i mean this pressure. is this is news to me uh okay let's see can we make it to ash i guess so she only has one coach we have full speed and we have i don't know if it's worthwhile to rush into like a closed area with I a tunnel with Lucio, Kiri, Tracer, maybe. They're pretty, sure. pretty slippery. I don't know if that's like, there's sure. higher chance to get value there versus blowing up the queen. Like our game plan is queen is on her island, like you said, like kind of Emong's on an island. Sure. If we can sure. blow her up, if we hit all our shots, then sure. Sure, sure. Um, so you're still you're still thinking within a hive mind though, where it's like, what target can we group up and rush? Sometimes mm. there's not a good answer to that question. Sometimes you have to be a little bit more creative. Like a chess analogy. It kind of is like chess though. Like there's a lot of like options, like, you know, and they could right. go in, in many different directions. So, so flip, but... flip the script. Whenever you're unclear, look at it from their perspective. What is like potential weakness about their, their setup right now? Um, well, they're pretty strong on the, fl the flank with Jay. It's either the isolated tank, which was our, but right. they had Queen all and they had beat and, or the Ash on the island. Right. Right. So, so, so what are your two solutions to this? So we can either deal with the isolated tank without necessarily hard committing into the bead, or we can deal with the isolated ash. How would you deal with those things? Maybe by deal with, I don't necessarily mean kill, but like force the issue, essentially. Do you think Apply should, maybe Apply should have dashed and just threatened the ash to like coach and run away? She might not have been able to catch up, but like, 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 did he... like even here, right? Yeah, like just even like here. staging, pressure. staging, and getting getting a little bit closer to exactly. be like one dash away. Let me actually let me see how apply. Did he dash into the queen? I guess our, like, I think we just committed to blow up queen. It, it's, it's, the, it? it's the NA thing, right? So it's exactly mm. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, part of it is we're also expecting beat, right? So that that to be fair, but I think in general it's like this is why this fight feels so messy, right? It's because we don't actually deal with the threats first. So here here's the two ways I'd look at that. Okay. One, we just need to put any sort of pressure or damage on this ash. And even just you throwing a kunai and hitting her in the head once. Mm -hmm. Because look at her kill, right? She is totally out of the fight. Right. The other way to look at this is because the Kiriko is also kind of out of position and the Lucio is kind of also out of position to help the Junker Queen. We could 3 2 1 put some pressure on Ash and shoot the Queen without actually even committing the blade. Mm. More passive, because with their current setup, are they really equipped to take a fight on the corner cleanly? 
No. Not really. No, Not it's really. going to be messy, right? Yeah. So what we do is we force the issue. We get an advantage without even using an ultimate. Then we pop the blade afterwards. That's fair. The issue is here is Apply standing in the open. Apply would never do this unless he has blade. Never. Right. Apply would sit here and throw shurikens and sit here and throw shurikens. And then the queen gets low. And then they freak. And then we either get shout or beat or we catch the ash isolated. We catch the beat. And then we're able to disengage cleaner. And then we don't have to worry about you once again getting your Suzu forced because their mm. setup's a little bit bad. Now, mm. does that mean that, you know, we need to completely revolutionize the way that we play the game? No, not at all. I just want us to have like some of these thoughts kind of going into our brain tomorrow. Um, right. Again, like when we go into these fights where we can just three, two, one, run it down main, but there's a lot of off angles. How do we want to approach those problems? Um, it's not unsolvable. Mm -hmm. So right there, you've caused a problem right there. Right. I hit, hit the bank on her, and now she has to wait. Now she's, now, she's off. Now yeah. she's wait. Now she's eight. Now if you hit another shot, she's eight. there she is again. Now she's low. So then now we're pushing while the Kiriko is looking backwards. She's not sure what she's supposed to do. The Ash is backing off. The Kiriko is backing off. And notice that we haven't used a single cooldown. Mm -hmm. So we've taken a lot less damage and freaking just won the fight just off of the fact that, oh, well, we shot the Ash on the off angle because she had no help. Okay, so we have, in theory, Brawl ult advantage here. They bob yep. early. Do we kite this? I think just Jay gets tapped. Now, let, let's just let's analyze this from, like, pretend it didn't happen kind of a perspective, okay? Yep, yep. So, so how would we approach this fight? Pretend J3 lives. What do we do? Uh, okay, so I knew we had Rush. Um, I think we did call they had Bob, so they had that in their mind. I think our call was we rush in if Bob ignore and gun for i think we actually call for tank here if i'm not mistaken because we, i think <laughs> right. so again the end yeah yeah <laughs> oh god i used to know why why is the tank the issue here especially in this particular fight call because what do they have well the ultimate lucio's wise, right ultimate yeah yeah well they, they're i'm assuming they already sent the bob out so the bob's just gonna pluck us pretty much because the problem with the bob is okay it kind of gets it kind of gets rubbed but if we focus the tank, we're standing in front of the bop. That's the right. And we have to avoid him. Pretend, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so then. So this is where you want in a hive mind. You want to go three, two, one, run past everybody, just int on backline with the Kitsune and pray that something good happens. Now, mm. <laughs> this is where we're going to educate her in a hive mind a little bit. Okay. Because if the goal was to just three, two, one, rush onto the backline with Kitsune, maybe beat on top of that, where and how should we be set up? And do you see any problems with that setup currently right now? I mean, if I if I three two one rushed and run for the backline, the rush ends pretty much at the checkpoint. They're, they they much full. They have a full defensive setup where they can actually kite that safely pretty enough. Much. Where like if we don't confirm anything, we're gonna be caught in no man's land. So pretty now I'm much. thinking, do I actually TP to J and do a cross Kitsune in deeper? Not not now, but five seconds ago, yes. Mm. If our plan was the Kitsune rushed bum rush backline, why on earth is my Kiriko sitting on cart? And why on earth is my also my Lucio Genji sitting on cart? We have this high ground. We could be lurking Kiriko here. We could have a Lucio Genji up here. We could let Yimong sit on cart by himself. They walk forward blindly. We could Sune rush right here, and then we do the exact same play. Mm. But the difference is the distance is less than half what we have to cross here. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that that three that like one and a half seconds of crossing. You just right, right. It's yeah, not just, oh, off angles and flanks because everyone's spilo pilled. Like, that's that's the joke with everything that I say is more off angles. But it's it's just because this is such a nasty dis distance to traverse. Like, it's so far, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, by the way, J3 dies to what? Like, as you pointed out, right? It's not just, oh, J3 messed up. J3 is purposely no getting targeted. He has no yeah. support, and he's getting 2v1 almost every single time. Yeah. Almost every single time. So, so yeah, he's the first as a team, as a team setup here, apply should be high ground, maybe paired with Custa up there so we can actually support Jay. Yeah. Maybe start high, yeah. and then I would also be on that side yep. too, Emong by himself, yep. and then yep. we had to go earlier. That's it. Think about mm -hmm. even all the way back on first point. Remember when we were like pushing on the first point attack here, right? Mm -hmm. Remember what our setup looked like? Yeah. It was it was kind of a bum rush, but it was actually apply coming from the the off angle here that really allowed it to happen because he snuck up on the Ash Kiriko basically for free, right? What I want to see from us, I think, moving forward is even in situations when we just want to run it down, I would love to have somebody set up on the flank. You remember when I was saying this, was it yesterday, the day before? I was like, the one rule is if we want to rush, I want J3 or apply set up on an off angle. This is why. Because if we don't get that angle, if we don't get close, then it's, it's you're crossing the Sahara with like a gallon of water, basically. Right. Um, Good analogy. Okay. Again, how would you approach this fight here? This is an impossible fight to win, so we got to be creative. 
Okay, if we're thinking outside the box, they have... Yeah, we did call. They had pretty much, yeah, three, four ultimates. Yep. We're not going to win the box is the way to look at it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, We clear top left because we saw Kiriko first. And then honestly, yeah, leave Emong. We literally just int into Brewery right here, which I think we sort of did. We almost got him. Like they're here. Uh, well, yeah, well, the, the tracer went back main. Okay, we cleared yeah, that. Yeah. Maybe we should have actually just ran up high. Where do we go? Okay, so we did actually try something Double out of back. the box, didn't we? Oh, we yeah, did the we double back to fake him out, but they didn't fall for it. A little bit. I, I don't actually think it's too bad of an idea here. I think this might be where I would put actually more impetus on you to be more creative here. Because you know this fight is probably lost, so don't feel bad if Imong dies. Don't feel guilty, right? Mm. Look at this as like, hey, I wonder what I could do from an off angle like this. Mm -hmm. You see this? You see that? You see the opportunities you have here to like just yeah, go backs. Yeah, I might have right? been able to maybe just literally if I kill that tracer right there with a the dink, then like the right. changes everything. Ash tracer everything, right? Because you know this fight is probably not won. So then what? Also look at the one brawl ult that we have in our pocket, right? It's beat. So mm -hmm. actually, even if Emong gets a little bit shaky because his Kiriko is on an off angle, he's fine. Because what's going to happen is they're going to beat, and then you're going to beat. And would you rather be here during the beat? Or would you rather be here? No, I'd right rather be here. I could support Jay, hit him from... T yeah, there's two squishes exactly. there. Ash and Tracer right there. Yeah, and yeah. crucially, where's your TP position from right here? You got all these options, right? Yeah. Anyone yeah. wants to chase you, you're safe. Where's your TP, TP options here? Almost the same Nowhere. Spot. I think you go to high ground at this point, which was yeah. like better than nothing, but it's 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 not much better than nothing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we get the brawl that we want. They then layer. So then whenever they layer like this... The best thing that we can do is honestly just have better positions, but because we kind of grouped and pushed, we didn't have a better position. So, of course, we're going to lose to 2v1. It's two ults versus one. How are we going to win that grouped up? Mm -hmm. Now, what would you do here? Do we need to do anything creative or clever, or you just need to be better with our ultimates? Because we have essentially the same ultimates plus Kitsune. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, I was basically right here. I was just farming the rest of my Katsune, so I didn't want to go on an off angle just yet and then yep, pop it yep. first. So that was yep. the initial priority. Sure. Um, maybe after I pop it, can I, I'm trying to see if I can take, if I even have time to go in a different angle. Do here. you need to take an angle? I guess in this scenario, it wouldn't be too bad. Cause like I said, I, I do have this problem where I like, I'm attached to Emong a little too much, but I knew he had his ultimate to sustain himself. So maybe like I sure. could ditch him for a moment sure. there. It, yeah, sure. It's an option. Um, this the situation, we theoretically could win the box because we do have Kutsune JQ. So if you want to mm. play here, it's not the end of the world. You could be here to Suzu JQ. It's fine. Um, this is where I think Jay was kind of talking about it in our chat where it's like, this play from Jay is great. He just has to be super careful about when he goes for it. Um, mm. this Katsune rush is before a Katsune. So he already burned recall and he's out of blinks now. And, so, and now it. we're and offensive. It. Ah, and okay. that's it. That's so we could, that's, we could Katsune rush, but then the, but the, see the Ash is already running away from the tracer. So it just becomes, oh, well, I, I was already doing that anyway, right? When we Katsune rush. Whereas if we Katsune rush and then have Jay push the flank, there's a higher chance of actually getting a kill. Yeah, we got nothing out of this. We really did, right? Yeah, we got nothing. We really did. They're already and I gone. Think this, is, this is when we wanted to just three, two, one in a hive mind, and and honestly, it was it was the right play. We obviously we see nine here, but it, it was the correct play. We needed to try and yeah, well that yeah, but our back, our foot was it like you know our backs were against the wall at this point. It shouldn't have Pretty gotten much. to this point. Like exactly, um, exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, I think main takeaways just for you, just for for you stuff is that, like whenever we're not gonna win the box ults, I want you to think mm -hmm. a little bit more creatively, like with your positioning and who you're helping. Um, even just to make yourself less of a target and so that you can maybe pop off or carry because you're hitting some crazy shots. Like you're we won a lot of fights off of you two tapping this Sombra, right? And you and you you killing the Kiriko or killing the Lucio or whatever. I saw that one in Nepal as well. Mm -hmm. Um so open up those opportunities when we're not gonna win the box. So why play fair if you're not gonna win? Right. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I I yeah, my default is to just, you know, yeah, play the box with whether exactly. I have Katsuna or advantage or not. So now exactly. we know we're down, get a little more creative. A little more one creative. Of, right. And then the yeah. one other detail would be, even if we have a box advantage, if we have the opportunity to set up on high grounds, consider it. For off mm. angles, consider it. Because that will make, that won't hurt our ability to push. That will make it better. Again, that kind of going back to that second point where it's like, oh, you and Jay here, Kitsune from here, Imong from here. It's like this, it's like a, you know, it's a freaking, you know, World War II, we're going to, we're going to storm Normandy, kind of a three-pronged approach here, right? We're not going right. to group up and just run it down, so... Um, but yeah, okay. Does that make sense? That was fantastic. That made a lot of sense. Yeah. Sure. Anything else you wanted to look at? <sighs> nope. That was that was the breakdown I needed.
Hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out my Patreon link in the description where you have the access to being able to play Overwatch with me, access to the Best Friends channel and Discord, which is super, super cool. But more importantly, you get a coaching discount, you get the opportunity to get uh, early access on all my video releases and much, much more. So be sure to check that out, link in the description. Have a nice day.